Are you thinking about moving from California to Massachusetts? Using the most recent stats, the fourth state that people relocated to Massachusetts from was California. Let's talk about a comparison of these two states and give you a little bit of what to expect if you're considering making the move from California to Massachusetts. It's like moving from uh, Goliath to David. And if memory serves me correctly, well, David won that fight. Before we get into this all, my name is Jeff Chubb, and I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you're new to the channel, then I really appreciate you considering subscribing. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a house, well, then I'd love to chat with you and just help you out in any way I can. Now, I'm going to do my best to stay away from the Los Angeles to Boston comparison, but be on the lookout for some future videos, as I actually think that could be a really great idea, maybe a San Francisco to Boston one as well. Okay, let's talk about the cost as the first category. Neither state here is a bargain, but California makes Massachusetts look good. California has a couple major and expensive metro areas like San Francisco and Los Angeles, but California is so much more as there is a lot in between those two major cities. We're going to talk about the difference in taxes shortly as there are some major differences here. Now, NerdWallet.com has a cost of living calculator, and they do the calculator for the city-to-city -city comparisons. For the Boston to San Francisco calculation, it would take $100,000 in San Francisco to have the same cost of living in Boston with a salary of $81,389. This means that the cost of living in Boston is 19% lower. Los Angeles and Boston are actually similar with no cost of living adjustment. Now, I know I said I was going to try to stay away from that city-to-city -city comparison, but I just thought that was a very relevant data point. Now, when you look at it from a full state versus state, according to mylifeelsewhere.com, Massachusetts is 7.4% more expensive than California. Meanwhile, according to nextburg.com, the median household income for Massachusetts is $89,645 compared to California's $84,097. Let's talk about the housing market, as it's a major part of the cost. Using data from nextburb.com, the median price for a single-family home is $561,403, and this is compared to California's whopping median price of $728,629. Now, one of the reasons I love working with people who are relocating from California is that it's one of the few times where people think we offer a great value. If someone comes from, say, Texas, people generally look at you cross-eyed when you start talking about prices. More than price, there were some other differences that I thought were really worth noting. For example, the average property tax in Massachusetts was $5,351. This is compared to California's average of $4,585. And from my understanding in California, it's so reasonable because the tax rate is 1% of the total home value and then can only increase by 2% per year. I have to say how awesome I think this is. Talk about a huge help to seniors who've lived in a house for maybe 30 years. Another interesting stat that I found was that single-family housing stock accounts for 52% of the dwellings in Massachusetts, and this is compared to 57% in California. Meanwhile, Massachusetts has a 63% home ownership rate compared to 56% for California. I don't think it's necessarily fair to pick a town in California and try to do a comparison to a town in Massachusetts because my general knowledge of towns in California is not too extensive, to say the least. What I would say is that if you are looking for some suggestions of areas or towns that could fit your needs, then you should give me a call. Shoot me a text. You know, shoot me an email. Let's talk about what's important to you and your price range, and then I could probably point you in some right directions with some suggestions of maybe some communities to look at. The big takeaway is that housing in the state of California is much more expensive than it is in Massachusetts. Man, that really feels good to say. It's rare that I can make that claim, but as a buyer, you will generally find more house for your money in Massachusetts than you will in California. But let's talk the weather now. And this one may be a little tough if you're moving from California to Massachusetts. Californians may have to deal with wildfires and earthquakes, but they're rewarded with darn near perfect weather. It also doesn't hurt that California takes up more than half of the western coast, so the weather is, well, expansive to say the least. It's sunny and perfect in San Diego, while it's perfect skiing weather in the northern part of this state. Ah, Massachusetts, well, we're a little bit different. To say the least, we don't span half the eastern coast, and what you see in the northern part of this state is pretty much what you're going to get in the Cape. Yes, some areas may get a rainstorm, but if it's cold in Newburyport, then you aren't wearing short sleeves and shorts getting ready to hit the beach on the Cape. Now, in Massachusetts, we welcome every season. 
Everyone who isn't from here thinks the winters are worse than they really are. The springs, they're just gorgeous with the 70 degree perfect days that you read about. The summers are, well, darn near perfect, while well, we're known for our color show with autumn leaves in the fall. And the seasons generally rate true to the three months per season. So, if you like snow, then great, we get some of that. If you like the 70 degree perfect days, well, we'll serve that up to you basically like clockwork every year. If you like the summer heat, but don't like the human misery, then get ready to hit our coast. If the majestic fall is your thing, then get ready to be amazed. But back to the big misperception. When people think of Massachusetts, everyone always brings up cold and harsh winters. Granted, I live off the coast, but I really don't think they are, are that bad. The northern part of the state definitely gets more of a snow beating than the southern part of the state, but I really don't think it's all that bad either side of the state. Now, let's talk about taxes. Massachusetts has the nickname of Taxachusetts, and I think that it's a rather unfair nickname. If anything, it should be called Fiatusetts. There are small incremental fees all over the place, which, let's be honest, well, they're taxes. But it's a death by a million cuts, quite frankly. So let's start with the income tax, though. Massachusetts, that's 5%. Massachusetts also has a recently voted in millionaire's tax. It increases the tax rate to 9% for anything over $1 million in income. California has a graduated income tax scale ranging from 1% up to 13%. Ouch. If you're making 50 grand a year, then your income tax would be 6% plus an additional $932. California has a sales tax of 7.25% and then has a sales tax rate cap of an additional 2.5%. So you could be in a local municipality and be paying up to 9.75% on sales tax. I'd say that I'd stop complaining about Massachusetts 6.25% sales tax, but well, that would be a line. But it is less. And there's no additional municipal sales tax for the local cities in Massachusetts either. I found an interesting CNN article that lists tax dollars state by state. It lists California as the 17th state for total taxes per $1,000. This is compared to Massachusetts, which they had ranked as 40th. To be fair, this was because of the low sales and excise tax rankings. When you are just looking at personal income, then California is number 13, with Massachusetts coming in at number 8. Either way, Massachusetts is not the tax Massachusetts state that it's made out to be. It's not great, but it could definitely be worse. Education is generally one of the most important factors when people are considering a move. School state rankings were a little all over the place. I think it's important to first say that it's the municipality that you're in that makes the biggest difference in regards to the quality of the school. So that is where you need to focus first. In the Wild Hub survey, they ranked Massachusetts as number one while California came in at number 29. U.S. News and Report had Massachusetts as number two. California came in at 38 when you look at their pre-K through 12th grade school rankings. Again, this really comes down to the area that you end up calling home. Whether you're in California or Massachusetts, no matter the state, there are some better school districts that perform better than others. While I don't know the school districts in California well, I am sure there are some towns with some absolutely amazing schools. But when it comes to education, Massachusetts, it really takes the cake on this one. Let's talk about job opportunities in both states. As economies go, California is basically a country and one of the biggest in the world. California is the United States' biggest economy with $2.9 trillion in economic output. If it was its own country, then they would be ranked number five in the world, just behind Germany and Japan. This is compared to Massachusetts' $544 billion of output. Now, look, I know they say size doesn't matter, but I'm confident the size of the state and it being, well, you know, more than half of the West Coast is a little helpful in this economic output metric. Currently, the unemployment rate in Massachusetts is 2.6 percent compared to 4.6 percent in California. The three largest industries in Massachusetts by revenue are the drug, cosmetic and toiletry industries, life insurance and annuities industry, and then college and universities. And interesting enough, hospitals, well, they were number four with biotech and number seven. Meanwhile, in California, the number one industry is agriculture. Number two is film and television, and number three is travel and tourism. I have to say, I was really shocked that technology, it wasn't on this list. A big fiber of the Massachusetts economy is, well, higher education. Yes, it is what is tied to a lot of economic output, but it's also why a lot of companies set up shop here. With so many colleges, each year there's a large pool of students to recruit from. And these schools include Harvard, MIT, Boston University, Northeastern, and Babson. Sorry, I just had to throw Babson in there. To round it all out, let's finish it up by talking about what each state has to offer, from outdoor activities to general entertainment. 
Now, I'm biased, but even with my bias, it feels like Massachusetts showed up to a gunfight with the knife on this one. California's sheer size and diverse weather and coastline alone just makes this hands down an easy winner for them. Hence, why tourism reigns in as number three for economic output. But for the fun of it, let's do a little comparison. I'm not going to get into the quality of the sports teams. But we can talk about the number. California has five baseball teams, three football teams, four basketball teams, and three hockey teams. Massachusetts has one team in each of those categories. On a percentage basis, there is a vast amount of green space in both states. But on an acreage basis, Massachusetts, they don't even stand a chance. California has ski resorts. We don't. During the winter months, we escape by going up north to areas like New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine for some skiing which would probably be a lot further away for the gal living in San Diego, but in technicality, it would actually still be in the same state. Now, Massachusetts has the Cape and the islands. California has what uh, feels like the entire West Coast. I've only been to the beaches in San Diego, but I am confident in along that massive coastline, there are a lot of additional nice beaches. Confident, extremely confident. I'll say that Massachusetts ocean water, well, it's a lot warmer, so I guess we've got that going for us. And in case you were wondering, we don't have any desert. So if the Mojave Desert is your thing, then, well, Massachusetts won't be your thing. Now, whether you're looking to relocate to Massachusetts in the next 9 or 90 days, then I'd love to chat with you. I'd also love to hear about your goals and also talk to you about well, what you're looking for in your new home to help offer some suggestions on possible communities that could be a great fit for you. All of my contact information, it's in the description below. But you can also go to youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill out your contact information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Let me know if you have any questions. Until next time.